Hi, I'm Guinevere, and I'm in Santa Fe today where I'm gonna do a quick little plein air painting in gouache. First, let's talk about basic materials you'll need. A sketchbook or watercolor paper. I'm using gouache for these, and I'll list my colors down below in the information section. And then I used a travel watercolor brush set. I began wandering around trying to decide what to paint. There were many beautiful things to choose from. One of the things that really struck me was the sun being low in the sky for the morning and the long shadows being cast. Ultimately, I chose this street scene with the tree casting a dappled shadow in the foreground and the bright sun lighting up the road in the distance. To start this painting, you wanna get your values in place first. So let's take a look at the scene and try to figure out where our values are. The first thing you wanna do is kind of squint your eyes or blur your eyes so you can see just the values minus the detail. Now you can see I'm drawing in where the darkest areas are. So this will give you a good idea of where your shadows are and where your lights are. So you wanna kinda squint your eyes like that to get the idea of where are my lights and darks for this composition. I had to work quickly to capture the light before it changed. After quickly putting my sketch in, I started putting in the darks for the tree and the poles, and then I go back and refine the poles to vary their thickness so the closer one is thicker and they get thinner as they go further in the distance. This and the perspective lines of the street is what's going to create the depth in the painting. It was a little bit breezy and so it kept moving my camera around. It didn't actually move the painting easel very much. Now I'm going to create a light, slightly lighter shadow color to do the shadows going across the road. So as you can see, I'm using a lot of blue. I want to keep it cool because the sun is warm. I want my shadows to be cool. So I'm very quickly going to start putting this shadow of the dappled light in. And again, since I'm working against the clock and the sun, I'm just going to do it real quickly and give myself a very loose idea of where some of the lights are and where the darks are. I'm going to mostly make it darker so that I can go back in and put in some of those lighter spots where the sun is peeking through. I decided to just cover the whole street area where the tree is with the dark color so that I could then go back in with lights over the top. I'm also going to mix up a slightly different shadow color for the adobe walls further down the road. I want to get that warm earth color for them, but also still have them be in shadow. Once I get all my shadows in place, I'll have a really nice idea of where the lights and the darks are supposed to be. And then I can start going in with other colors that aren't the brightest bright or the darkest dark. That's when I bring in my mid-tones and my other colors. So keeping it really basic in the beginning, just lights and darks. And then after you get, get that established, then you come in with your other colors and other mid-tones. I position myself facing towards the sun. I do this for two reasons. One, because I enjoyed the composition, but two, mainly because I didn't want the sun to be directly on my painting surface. When I started, I was completely in the shade of this tree, but as the sun starts to move, I'm losing my shade. But it is important to remember to keep your painting in the shade because when you're painting in direct sunlight, you tend to skew the values and make them too extreme because sunlight is so bright. And so when you bring the painting indoors, it's not going to look as good. For these distant trees at the end of the street, I really want to create that effect that the light is coming from behind them. So the majority of the 
tree or bush is going to be in shadow, but right around the edge it starts to lighten up where the sun is lighting up those leaves with the subsurface scattering. I'm going to mix up another color for this other bush to try to give the feeling that they're different type of trees or bushes. want to make some variation there, so I just added a little bit more yellow into this green to kind of warm it up a little bit. I noticed that there's even more trees and bushes behind this little bush, so I decided to just fill it all in with that lighter green color. And this way I could sort of blend the background mountains in with the bushes to give an either further atmospheric effect by just having the distant bushes and trees blend in with the color of the mountain. So I have to recreate that mountain color and sort of blend them together. And since it's gouache, I can just use a little bit more water to kind of blend the two together because it re-wets the paint that's already there. Now to differentiate those uh, bushes and trees from the distance and the background stuff, I'm going to come back in with a lighter mixture, a little bit more white in it, to just really highlight the edge, really again lighting up the edge of those trees and bushes, just so you can get the feeling of where the sun is hitting them right on the edge being backlit. Now I'm going to push the values a little bit more, push those distant hills further back into the distance, create a little bit more atmosphere by lighting them up again. So taking the same color, adding a little bit more white, making them a little bit lighter, pushing them back further. So one thing with gouache is that it's a slightly different color when it's wet. And once it dries, then you can see the actual value of it. So sometimes it does take a few passes to get the right value. It might dry and be a little bit darker or be a little bit lighter depending on the color. So you do have to keep an eye on that and make adjustments when it's needed. And here I just decided that I wanted the hills to be a little lighter. And then finally I'm going to make it even lighter just across that top edge. And this sort of gives the mountain a a curved feeling. It makes it look like the top is slightly further away than the middle part of it, Morning. giving it that sort of rounded earth shape and feel to it. As I reach the end of my painting, you can see that the shadow has retreated. The sun is higher in the sky. I've had to get out my big hat to keep the sun off my face, but my painting surface is still in the shade. So this will prevent me from making incorrect value choices by having more even light that isn't so bright. One of the things you have to learn with plein air painting and painting in general is a bit of patience. So the thing that attracted me most to this scene was the way that the sun reflected off the wires, kind of making the wires sparkle as they moved a little bit in the breeze and getting that real shiny wire going across the distant trees and the dark background was really what attracted me and really what excited me about this scene, the way that those wires lit up and came down the street towards me. So I ended up having to do the whole painting to finally, right at the end, the very last piece, put in the thing that originally attracted me to this scene. Because they're a small element, it was better to get the whole rest of the scene in place before I could put that final sparkle on, that final little piece that really made it for me and made it fun and exciting to work on. What is it that attracts you to a particular scene? Try to take note of that. What is it that attracts you and catches your eye? Make sure that you do your best on those parts and sometimes you want to save them right till the end to really make them pop. What are the things you really enjoy about plein air painting and what are the things that you struggle with? Let me know down in the comments because I have a few more of these videos coming up 
doing some plein air gouache paintings and I'd like to be able to answer your questions in future videos so let me know down in the comments. Also don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends if you have any other friends that are artists who are interested in plein air painting be sure to send it on over to them and I'll see you guys next week. I got lots more where this came from, plenty of tips and tutorials for you, so check out some of my other videos.